blessings, beautiful souls. Sarava and I share to you. So how are you today? I sincerely hope that you are doing well. So I had a bit of a requested video sort of thrown at me um, last week and it was something super simple, something that I had actually never thought of making a video on or about. So it is how to shuffle your tarot deck appropriately, whatever that means. And so I wanted to be able to put some things forth for consideration, show you ways that I personally shuffle my tarot decks, tell you why it is that I shuffle my tarot decks the way that I do, and also talk about things like cardstock and reversals and all of those types of things because just from a tactical perspective, it does make a difference how you shuffle your deck because you want to make sure that you're shuffling it amazingly so that you get a really great mix variety of cards. And so there are ways in which we can do that. We'll also be discussing decks that are too big for your hands. What are some of the options that we can do there? I mean, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. So I'm going to change the position of this camera, put it over my reader's table, and we are going to get stuck in to some of this tasty work. Okay, so first and foremost, the idea behind shuffling your deck is to ensure that you get the most random mix of cards that you possibly can that will then perfectly synchronize to the individual that you are reading for. Each shuffle will provide you with a multitude of different combinations of cards. The idea is to take the deck out of its original order and to mix it up to the point where, you know, incredible things can happen. Like once you know that your deck is fully mixed up and you start laying out those cards, let's say you get six major arcana cards in a row. That's a boom, wow moment, okay? Let's say you get five reversed cards and then, you know, two aces and again, you you see a pattern of boom that's awesome and I'm just giving you some wild examples here they don't have to be exactly that way but the point is when you sit down to shuffle your deck you want to make sure that it is the best shuffle that you can get so that you're really randomizing and reordering those cards each and every time that you shuffle especially if you're doing back-to-back -back readings like I do I can do 8 to 10 to 15 readings in one day and I can sometimes use the same deck across like five readings and I want to make sure that each and every time I begin the new reading that I am giving that deck a really, really good shuffle. So I will not repeat the same order of cards that I got in my previous reading. So these are important things to consider. The length of time that you shuffle for, the way that you shuffle, and the why you shuffle is all really, really important. What I wanted to say next is that not all decks are made equal. This here is the self-published version of the Lightseers Tarot by the Sacred Creator brand, my lovely friend Chris Ann Donnelly. This deck here is stunning. It is made of extraordinarily sturdy stock. It does not bend very easy. It's around 400 GSM. It's stiff, it's solid, and care must be taken. As you can see, this deck has the same number of cards as this one right here, which is the Tarot of the Hidden Realm by the Stone Maiden and Barbara Moore. This is a Llewellyn deck. And I want you to see something. Llewellyn cardstock versus self-published 400 GSM. Can you see a discrepancy in size there? This is 400 GSM, self-published. This is mass-produced Llewellyn. And you can see that there is a huge difference in cardstock, right? All right, this matters, right? Because it affects how you shuffle. So let's start off with this bad boy here. See the flimsiness of this of this stock, okay? This kind of stock makes it perfect for those who like to riffle shuffle, something that I personally don't like to do, but I'm gonna show you how it's done. So if you've never heard of this, this is what is referred to as riffle shuffling amongst the tarot communities. Please, tarot gods, forgive me. There you go. You get a nice randomized shuffle. When you do this, there is a quick and easy edge to it. It is very playing card poker style shuffling, and yet there are plenty of readers who have no problem doing so. 
Shuffling your decks in that way will ensure that they are well shuffled indeed, but it's also going to create wear and tear. And the types of decks that you can in fact riffle shuffle are dependent on that cardstock. The more malleable the cardstock, the thinner, the more flexy it is, the better it is for riffle shuffling. Next we have hand over shuffling. This is another very popular way to shuffle your cards and the method that I prefer to use. The hand over shuffle looks like this. Pretty simple, pretty easy. It doesn't have the same effect as riffle shuffling does and that is why some readers prefer to riffle shuffle and why others do not. But the reason why I personally shuffle my decks this way, one, I want them to last me a lifetime and I want to be able to pass my decks down to my children and therefore the treatment of my decks are important. Um, second of all, I like to spend time in this space. I like to shuffle. It's meditative to me. When I am shuffling a deck, for a client reading specifically, I hold a focused intention in my mind. I say a mantra over and over in my head. I continuously shuffle. It becomes this hypnotic, meditative thing. And it's all part of my personal style of reading. This dance of shuffle that I do at the start of every one of my client readings is really truly one of the ways that I ground and center where I become present in the moment and where I 100% focus on the client and the intentions that I have for that client's reading. It enables me all the time in the world to hold that focus and to clear my mind, to ground and to center. And by the time I am finished, I have a well shuffled deck like that. The size of your deck does matter in how it is that you will shuffle it. So this is the 2020 Harmonious Tarot. Look at the size of this beast. I mean, it is so small. Look at that. Easy peasy. Even someone with tiny hands like myself can shuffle this deck. No worries at all. However, we have here, this is the Venus Rising Oracle by Audi Arts, available on Etsy. Look at the size of this deck compared to my hand. I can't pick the whole thing up. I can't pick it all up. It is very, very long. So I can pick this one up, but I can't pick this one up. Okay, because I have tiny hands. You might be able to, I certainly don't. And so for decks that are larger than life, larger than can be managed, like look at this. It's doable, but it's clumsy. What you can then do is turn it to the side, like so, and hand over. Shuffle them. You can riffle shuffle this as well if you want to, if that, you're that type of a person. I don't mind. It's not my deck that you're riffle shuffling. It's yours. So I'll try not to be too pedantic about it. But this is how I personally shuffle larger cards like this one. And there are plenty of decks that are oversized. The Mari El Tarot is a larger deck. The Druid Craft Tarot is a larger deck. There are many decks that come in a larger format and there are also decks that come in a smaller format. So being able to shuffle any deck anytime is important, <laughs> I suppose. So that's one way to shuffle oversized decks. If you are wanting to incorporate reversals into your reading, then there are other ways in which you can do this. Um, riffle shuffling is a good one. Take half of the deck, turn it around and do your riffle shuffle. I'm not riffle shuffling the sun and moon tarot. I'm just letting you know, okay? That's not something that I would do. This is a shiffer. A Schiffer deck or US game systems? I can't actually remember now, but the cardstock is good. And so I don't riffle shuffle this one. Uh, not ever. <laughs> it's important to me. But you can, you can in fact do these ones, turn it, and you've got a really good mix.
If you want to be really pedantic, you can then turn it again and riffle shuffle it again, turn it again and riffle shuffle it again. If that's something that you're super into, if you want a really good mix of reversals. The one thing that I will say though, when it comes to reversals, it is important after you have done your reading with that reversed deck to ensure that you reset the deck. So place all the cards upright again. And then the next time you want to do a reading that incorporates reversals, then go through the process all over again. This way you are ensuring that the reversal aspect is as random as the shuffled aspect is. So the order of the deck is what you want to, to consider when you're shuffling. So you don't want a deck that's fully in order. You don't want it as it is out of the box. You want to randomize it as much as possible. The same intention goes into the way in which you choose to reverse your cards. So let's say I have incorporated reversals in this one for a reading and then I put the card, I put the deck off to the side, then I bring it back and I start to shuffle it for another reading without resetting it. Then I know that all the reverse cards that were in that first reading are also in the same reading. Nothing has changed in that reversal element. So the best way to do this is to reset your deck. Always randomize your cards, whether that be reversed cards or upright cards. Randomize as much as possible. All right, let's talk about your tarot and oracle card backing because it does make a difference. There is such a thing as a non-reversible tarot card backing and a reversible tarot card backing, and I'm about to show you exactly what I mean. Look at the Messenger Oracle by Sandra Kuntz. It has a bird with a little disc there, and it's upright. If I was to turn that upside down, you can clearly see that this bird is upside down. That is what is a non-reversible backing. You have to be quite careful with this because take a look at the Tarot of the Hidden Realm. You need to look pretty carefully at this deck to realize that it's non-reversible because the image on the back is so intricate. But if I'm to hold this one side by side, you can see that they're the same. If I was to hold it upside down, you can see that these little dragon eyes, or so I like to call them, are occupying different positions now. And therefore, if you are going to use a deck like this with reversals in it, you would be aware of the cards that were in fact reversed. A reversible backing is what you see here with the Light Seer's Tarot. There is symmetry. If I hold the deck like so, like this, and if I turn it, nothing changes. It is exactly the same upright as it is reverse. I could turn this around a hundred times and the image is fully reversible. There is a symmetry to it. We have exactly the same pattern happening on both sides of the cards and it is just fabulous. Really great for incorporating reversals. All right, the same with the sun and moon tarot. Upright or reverse, you have the same image. Nothing is given away by the card back at all. So these two decks are really great examples of reversible backings. So there you have it, beautiful souls. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope you've been able to learn something. I, so I hope that I have been able to put forth something for consideration at the very least. I hope I've been able to provide you with something tangible that you can put to good use and make sure to check out my links. Follow me on the socials. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. That would help me out tremendously and I will chat to you soon. Mwah. Bye.